interesting speaker. We'll be talking more about uh, uh, that shortly. Uh, but thanks for coming over. There's a lot of options, uh, a lot of events happening in Silicon Valley and San Francisco, and uh, we appreciate you guys choosing this. Um, uh, why we did this? We started this about a year and a half back. Um, my, uh, I call it my life 1.0. Was uh, I, uh, I was in advertising. I'm still in advertising, and so uh, we had these startups actually uh, writing to us from different parts of the world. You know, we can work with them, and so we thought about launching this uh, platform. Uh, because my firm actually enables uh, American brands to reach out to different cultures, uh, nationally and globally. So we thought, okay, we launched this platform, and before we know, we have about a couple of thousand members, and then uh, we meet, most of the weeks we meet here, uh, and bring together uh, entrepreneurs, uh, startups, founders, and so on, uh, to talk and uh, to talk to you guys. So, thanks for coming again, and uh, so, just to give you guys an idea, like, uh, what kind of representation we have, because Everybody doesn't get a chance to go and meet everyone. I always used to wonder at that. You know? So let's let's just get a quick feel of you know what uh, representation we have. So we're going to quickly go around the room, and you, we can start with you if that's okay. Uh, but <laughs> and brash from Denmark. And so we are back in America, but with a different business plan this time. You know, it's not Raven Plunder anymore. I'm a serial entrepreneur and uh, moving to San Francisco later this year. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Gary Chai. I am uh, working in connected cars uh, industry in Ukraine, from Ukraine, looking to additional scale uh, to US and different markets. So that's it. Um, hi, my name is Ivan. I came here with you, Gary. We are working on the same project. So, yes, we are looking for some kind of networking and how to scale our project. So, if you are interested, let's connect us. Hi, uh, my name is Remy, I'm from the Netherlands. I'm here for two, two months to attend Prague University and to further launch my startup, which is aimed for uh, education. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Akshay, I'm from India, and uh, I'm working in a mobile education startup, uh, getting technology and education together. And uh, with Remy, I'm at uh, Draper University, which is a boot camp started at Draper in San Mateo. So we're here for uh, the next two months, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Excited to meet you all. So uh, just so you guys know, like Draper, this is by the Draper, and uh, and they take under 20 years old. Is that no? Till uh, like 20 to 30. 20 to 30 years old. Okay, the Thiel, Peter Thiel takes under 20. 120 years. Okay, wow, wow, the age is going down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Anton, and we're here already for two weeks in the best city in the world, and we're here. Uh, working uh, on our, our startup it's called Audaster. It's uh, the most cool application for Twitter. Don't go. I'll just go next. Yeah. Uh, hi guys, I'm Suhail uh, from India originally. I'm in a very, very early stages thinking about a startup, so I'm just looking for ideas, inspiration, uh, stories uh, for how everybody else is doing their thing. So that's what I'm looking for. Excellent. Hi everyone, I'm Sean. My wife is an immigration lawyer and I'm partnering with her to simplify the immigration process. So, no, coming not. soon. I'm just going to write this in, so. <laughs> coming soon, but yes. Reach out to me if you need anything. I'll help. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> my mom actually works for an immigration law. So. Uh, but I came out here a year and a half ago from New York. I uh, worked for Silicon Valley Bank and and what are the new companies that are out there. So. Hi, I'm Nick, I'm from France. 
than the CEO of Bishar, which is a, a platform in career management. So we are based here. We are, my partner is here. He lives there from October. And um, I should arrive if I get my visa. There you go. <laughs> in a few weeks. So I hope, yeah. I hope my lawyer is it's good. If I it's know. not, I, I will continue. I, I live with her, so it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Jasmin Zer. I recently moved to San Francisco from Los Angeles. I was going to school over there, uh, USC Marshall. I did my MBA from there. And I am riding in the same boat as Suhail. Is that right? Suhail, yeah. That's right. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to get inspiration about the ideas and meet wonderful people over there. Thank you so much. You come to the right place. Hi, my name is uh, Sami Hassan. I'm from Pakistan, and, uh, but I live here now. And uh, I think me, Suhail, and Jaspinder, we are on the same boat. So I'm working on a business plan, you know, on my idea to bring a new application. And it, overall, it will be helping uh, social traveling. So, so I'm just, you know, here to meet people and see that, you know, how, uh, you know, if there is any help, I can just, you know, take their project to one side. Tech or non-tech background? I, uh, well, it's mixed, you know, I'm working in a tech industry, I'm a project manager, business okay. analyst, but still I need somebody to code application for me, for iPhone or Android. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Right. Yeah, hi, I'm Eric Swan. I live here in San Francisco, and uh, I am the founder and CEO of Shopcast TV, a multimedia mobile e-commerce solution, which we're going to be launching to the public this Christmas. And uh, I want to come here and network with people and find out what's going on. A uh, guy from the Netherlands, yes. uh, talk to me later because I know a VC and a bank over there that would want to talk to you. And the guy's from Ukraine, hey, I'm going to go to live this summer and hook up with the tech guys over there, so we should talk. <laughs> Thank you. Love that. Okay. Carry on, guys, please. Did you introduce yourself? No? No? You don't want to? Um, okay. Um, hi, my name is Jasmine. Um, I'm American. I actually work for an English language school and professional skills school here in uh, San Francisco near the Ferry Building. Um, so we get a lot of international students who are entrepreneurs who would love to check out this event. So I was just scoping it out. And if you have any friends or family members who are interested in learning English, we provide um, F1 student documents as well. So let me know if you have questions. Hi, I'm, I'm Raji. I'm the founder of Stribby.com. So I'm here to open up a marketing office and I'm, I'm basically networking to see how can I hire my team. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm Ed. I'm the partner of Nick in the career management. I invest in SF. I've been uh, you know, lucky at the Visa Lottery. I'm a play guy. I've done so many visas. Yeah. Diversity yeah. Lottery. And I've done so many visas before, so it works. Play at the diversity lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Farid. I'm French as well. Uh, I'm living here now, and I miss we miss two guys who do some good honesty and wonderful Thank you. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm the founder of Brian Capital. I'm Asia in that order, I would say. Uh, 
Yeah, but you should talk about me, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm surprised sometimes that we have really we would have a lot of people from China, Japan, India. India is always represented here, uh, very well. Um, but again, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for coming. So, uh, you know, it's uh, I, I met uh, I met Yi, who was by Lizzie. Uh, at uh, yeah, at an event, and uh, we talked, and uh, we connected, and uh, I thought, you know, this is really an interesting story that I want to bring to my members, and so here uh, she is. Uh, I really want to, uh, uh, you know, have her talk more about. Uh, if we get all welcome, please. So thank you, everyone, and it's a lot exciting like to see so many different faces. Said like, if you can try to imagine that everyone like fly from fly from different places, it's kind of like magic we gather everyone here. And uh, for me, I originally came from China, and I did my school in Boston, United States, and then we moved for startup, so we now live in Sunnyville and Mountainville. So we take our trip here today, like it's happy to see so many different faces today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, in general, I, I think we opened it up to the speaker to talk about, like, you know, what's, uh, how they started. So, uh, for those who don't know, uh, uh, he's the, the founder and CEO of Orbius and uh, Phototime. And um, so, how did you come up with the idea? How did you come up with the concept? Uh, when did you start working on it? You, you've gone through Series A around C Angel, Series A, and now you're working on Series B, I, I believe. So. You have done what I think a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs are look forward to do. Um, so you know, we would love to hear more about how you, the, the whole story of Orpheus. <laughs> sure. I like to start. Just give you guys a background that uh, I'm from Orpheus. Uh, we focus on image recognition, both for facial recognition, object recognition, scenery understanding, all together. So basically, we use deep learning and neural network technology to understand the visual inputs and auto tagging them, both for faces and objects. And uh, we started our company back in May 2012. Since uh, it's just a group of friends who got the idea, we started a company, we do not know what we should do or what to do to start a company. I do not have like any legal background. So we made the decision that probably attending an incubation program locally here will help us to work through the different like, steps and different like problems. There are some mentor and guidance. So while we were still at school in Boston, we started the application platform. Like we write like different application forms, so we apply. We applied around ten different incubators, like from not not too much strategy actually back that time. We just from the top one to the ten, we just uh, choose the ten. And luckily, we got um, our very first acceptance letter from Accelerate Labs in Chicago, which currently re they renamed themselves to uh, TechStar Chicago. So we were so excited, got the offer letter, and. Uh, they only gave us like two weeks to decide whether we, we will join that or not. So we happily made a signature. And after that, the second day, um, we also received a final notice from the Y Combinator and the full acceptance from the Techstar border. But since we already signed the agreement, so we kind of move ourselves. Initially, we have six members, all from Boston. So we move ourselves directly from Boston to Chicago to start our business. So it's kind of a like long story since it's already been three years, but uh, we do receive a lot of help while we were in the incubation program, especially for us, we're international background. We don't really have deep connections, especially to local market and investors and the people. So just to share the experience, I'd really like to give you a brief overview of what that three months experience like. So basically, the first month is all about like making connections and getting ideas brainstormed. Uh, within one more month, we met around 300 different people. Every day we meet around six to seven. Um, some of them are like serious entrepreneurs like you guys, and uh, some are like from the financial background, like different uh, banks, and uh, some like industry leaders. We talk with them, we pitch our ideas. Actually, it's not all about pitching, it's more like we present it, they give feedback, they say, okay, this is right, this is gonna work, this is not gonna work. We also, we brainstorm together. So after the first months, uh, we pivot our ideas a lot, and uh, it's kind of enjoyable, but also uh, uh, 
hard decision things from the start we have our own initial idea and we also within the one month we got like tons of different suggestions tons of direction that sounds like very promising so the second month is more like the decision the internal discussion for us to do the minus which means we only have six people by then we cannot do all of them we cannot go after every market version although they're all sounds very promising so we did a lot of discussion, market research, and then we refined from the hundred different ideas, like back to the, combined with our original idea, we back to the business that we're doing. So we started, um, like started running our business since the second month after we like more determined and more clear about how we should like to do uh, for improving our technology and to do big. So, uh, the second month, we decided we're going to do an API platform with different suggestions from different like uh, mentors. Uh, and also, there are a market chance that one of our previous competitors got acquired by Facebook and they announced they're going to shut down their platform. So we need also that situation, we decided we need to move fast and do our API platform to leverage all the customers they left over. So we focus our product the second month by the help with different suggestions. So we uh, we launch our API platform uh, by the start of the third month. Third months, and uh, the third month within the incubation program is more like uh, we prepare for our demo day. There's different teachers, like some teachers that recording videos like this, and then we look at our own pitches, even like the standing pose, like the speed of your speaking the gesture, like things. We did around 200 times of refining our uh, pitches just for the demo day. But it's also a good practice since every time you make changes, you need to think through the phone. And while we were changing that, it actually gave us more confidence and a uh, more clear picture about how we should do it, how we should approach to the goal. So it's very helpful. We had a pretty successful demo day in Chicago and we got covered by Hoover, Business Way, Fast Company, and different media. And uh, luckily, after the demo day, we successfully get our uh, seed round from like local investor together with some backup investor in China. So it's a kind of combined. And then when the program finished, we decided, OK, uh, Chicago is enough. And also, we spend the best time in Chicago in the summer. We heard the winter is horrible, so we made a quick decision moving from Chicago to here, but more importantly because our co-founders previously came from Google, they know the environment here, they think there's a lot of talent here, so we kind of make the decision to move from Chicago to here by the end of uh, 2012. So it has been a long time we keep refining our technology, like licensing our technology through API platform, we adopt that freemium model to like people use that for free for a while and if they think their business need that then we have like some subs monthly subscription package. It's really good. Currently we have around six thousand individual business partners who are using our technology and we think okay how should we take another jump from like the very bottom like API providers because it's exciting but doesn't sound that big and doesn't make a lot of money. Does the vision not big enough? We want to do our startup. We want to grow the company bigger and bigger. And the more, most importantly, we want to. It's not only limited to the developers. We, we think the technology cool, and we want to everyone like like every one of us. We can use the technology while it's developing. So we made the big decision in last year, and we roll out a consumer application called Phototype. Uh, to the mass public. So basically, uh, it's an application that uh, automatically organizes and tagging your photos. Your photos on your mobile phones, on your social networks, in your cloud drives like Dropbox. We auto tagging them, like we do facial recognition of them. You can easily search and find in all your photos, like and easily share by like typing keywords, just like what you do on um, a Google image search, but for your own photos. Uh, so we launched the app. It was pretty interesting. And um, since we're moving from the B2B side to the B2C, we also like very uh, appreciate if any anyone like if you like can download and try it. If you have any suggestions, we're happy to hear that because there's our like our new baby with more like focus on like, how we can make it better. 
So it's kind of a story, definitely on the way. It sounds exciting, but it's definitely a lot like problems and situations we face along the way, like including the visa problems. Like, like we move around from the East Coast to the middle, then to the, um, to the Bay Area. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we can discuss more if you are interested in certain product visa, probably like how to organize a team and different things. Excellent. Could you talk a bit about funding? Mm -hmm. uh, um, what investor you talked about one that came from China was it like uh, you knew them or is like Techstars recommended or uh, if you can talk about like the fundings that you've gotten sure. through. Yeah. It's uh, so for our seed round in total we raised the 1.7 million and uh, uh, most of the part from the uh, local US and there are certain big chunk from uh, China back up investors. Uh, we can talk different like for Paul just mentioned about the China investors, it's actually not because of our own relationship. It's more like um, in China, the tech is also emerging. A lot of people doing startups, especially they also allow a spotlight to the Silicon Valley. And we are the very first entrepreneur team that accepted by the top American incubation program. So by the acceptance and by the like mainstream media coverage here, there are actually a lot of investors in China they are chasing, they're just like saying they saying they want to invest. Yeah. The, the experience is totally different from here. We need to uh, present and uh, project the revenue and things we're pitching to every investor. It's more like okay, there are very few uh, like Chinese team that can enter the core of the the top incubators, if we accept it, they kind of already have the bar, okay, they're doing good, so there are really a lot of people like really wanted to put money in. So that's also reflect, that's why we made a good decision to join the incubation pro program to like deeply involve the local community and got coverage by the mainstream media here. It's really helped to get the, or the money from like the overseas because they really buying those ideas. Yeah. And for the other part is from uh, local here, it's more from the pitching, the standard way that we're pitching our uh, product, our idea. Uh, we got introductions by the incubation program. And also, as I mentioned, the first month we meet around 300 people. We definitely try our best to keep connections with them. And if we announce that we're raising money and we send an email, there's a lot of people that's very, even though they have their own judgment on the thing, but they're really helpful, they're open-minded, they help us make the introduction to a lot of different investors. And we end up with securities from pretty successfully. So did you say like uh, you let go of YC? Did you get an acceptance from YC at that time? Or? We got the final, yeah, final uh, notice letter from YC. But by that time, we already signed the contract with these other labs. So it's okay. just the timing doesn't match. Right. So YC, YC name holds a lot of you know value in the market. Was mm -hmm. it like a good decision to let go of YC and still go with uh, another incubator in Chicago? Um, I mean, to be honest, uh, we didn't really think that way. Uh, we never been to YC. I don't know how much value YC is going to bring us. And this it is 2012, is, right? Yeah, 2012. Okay. And, uh, it is more for us because for us, we're like first time entrepreneur. Uh, we don't have a lot of help handy. We don't know anything. And we don't really think that we, we will get accepted by the top incubator. So we don't really prepare anything. So when we got the first acceptance, we're so excited and we so appreciate that they really like us. So you know, like the emotional wise, we're really thankful, okay, they gave us a letter. And by, they only have a two weeks window. We, we need a two weeks, two weeks window, we didn't receive anything. And we really like them by the interview and things. So we decided to join them, yeah. And later on, just like, the community, the tech community is, um, you can say it's big, but it's also relatively small. We just want to say, okay, first we send for, for them to send us the first offer, and the second is we think we should keep our promise since we signed the contract, we will really like the incubation program as well, so we made the decision we don't swing that and we go there. Right. Does your co-founders, um, co they all came from Boston, you said? Yes, like. our engineer. Okay, and uh, do you guys have like different backgrounds the two uh, all came from? So. Uh, the other two co-founders more from technical background. Okay. 
actually, uh, the idea is came from one of our tech co-founder, our CTO. He previously working in Google for YouTube, and he got the idea by seeing like there's millions of uh, millions of minutes video uploaded to YouTube, but uh, there's less than three percent of metadata automatically go with the video. It's hard for people to search. It's hard for like match up advertisement and different things. And a lot of the, the content was eyeball checked and manually tagged by a certain group. So he got the idea whether we could use a revision technology to auto tagging those video pieces or even images. So he got this idea. He he don't know what to do because he's not also not that experienced. So when he go back to school from Google, mm -hmm. he sent out an email to his lab mates. So he got this idea, anyone interested in talking? And the other co-founder replied, because they are from the same school, just re replied the email chain, okay, they grab a coffee, they both got excited about this idea. And this is how they initially started. And since they are both technical background, they are thinking finding someone to help them. And, uh, but they kind of like swim back and forth for a long time since uh, we decided to go. So I, I'm a friend of one of the co-founders. Uh, I know uh, I know they're going to start uh, their startup. I'm happy for them. So we one time we just randomly have a dinner. And they were talking, OK, we want to do seriously uh, start a company. But both of us have technical backgrounds. Uh, you already like uh, finished school, you went to the industry, you know a lot of people, so can you help us to introduce someone who can help us? And I hear their story and their idea feeling very excited and at the dinner I said, um, I can help you fight, but uh, how about I join myself? And he said, oh, that would be great. And uh, since I only know one of them, so the second day I made a phone call with the other co-founder, just briefly communicating with the idea with what I'm thinking, what I can do. And um, he's also, we had a really enjoyable conversation. And the third day, we made the decision I fly uh, to Chicago with them. Yeah, so it's a pretty short decision. Yeah. Um, if any, did you go, did you come across any visa immigration issues or were you like? Yeah, um, yeah, we did. How did you overcome that? Um, so f when we started the company, um, it's an incubation program and uh, it's during the summer. So uh, most of our team members were uh, still at school doing their PhD program. So during the summer, they can do like using their CPT to do the internship program and they will take it as a three months program. For ourselves at that time, we think, okay, let's try if it's work. And we will think about later how we like finalize the visa. If within the three months, we don't think it's the right way to go, then we can go back to school. So we kind of like take the trial version in the incubation program. And after it, uh, we think, OK, we really, really want to continuously work on this project. So the next problem is how we're going to solve our visa. And we consult different lawyers in the incubation. They also get like legal consultant work. We consult them. They said, OK, for startup, you can uh, sponsor H1B for your own employees. Uh, the only thing is you need to uh, to prove to the immigration office that you have the capability, uh, both in the size, uh, the money-wise, have the capability to sponsor their H-1B visa. So uh, then we said, OK, we, we know what it is. So we start doing the fundraising. And after we got the first uh, uh, amount, like first 350K, we started kicking off our visa application process for the first person. Yeah, it is me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because it's luckily the 300, the first 350k is enough for supporting my salary from one year maximum to three years. So we demonstrate that we have the capability to sponsor uh, my salary even if we don't have any revenue. So this is one proof we provided. And the second is also thanks to the incubation program, the demo demo day, we got covered by a lot of uh, like uh, reputational media and that is how the proof to the immigration of saying okay we really run a solid business it's not like some random people came and you can track it we give them the links we screenshot different business and we got the first batch of small model customers and we got investors so we, we like deliver all those package like to apply for the visa and the first time uh, 
because I, I previously worked so my case is more like transferring my H1B from the previous co company to our company. So I lucky I don't need to do the lottery, but um, we still need to wait for the decision. And the first I got the RFE, the reference of evidence, uh, further evidence, and we prepare more like detailed information. And uh, the CEO from the incubation program is very famous people. He's the CEO of Match.com and uh, the board member IAC group and uh, Troy having the CEO of Shore Payroll and different people. They also help us to write the recommendation letter. I don't know whether those pieces help, but this is uh, everything we did. I don't know which part really helped, but after we uh, submitted every other like supporting materials, it's got fully approved. And later on, it's more, by the time we got more media coverage, by the time we got more money, it's becoming easier and easier. So it, it seems like um, you know, the going through an incubation or acceleration program, it really makes a big difference. I mean, networking, for us. Yeah. Yeah. the networking, the funding, you know, the, uh, all the visa immigration help that they help you, it really is, is a big factor, is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah, for our company it is. Since we're first time entrepreneur, we're just from graduating from school, we don't have like too much resources and link in the community, so that really helps. So what are some tough lessons that you learned so far? There are actually a lot of lessons I learned. It's hard to decide which one is tougher. <laughs> They're definitely like the, although it's becoming easier and easier, but it's still like a lot of headache things we need to consider every time we want to uh, recruit an international background employee. Because for startup, they have kind of a quota, which means if our company is under 25 people, uh, it's not a hard that hard lie, but they mentioned around the maximum around seven or maximum eight. Each one be said is a quota that you can take. Since our initial team member already takes several quotas, so every other member, new employees, were hiring. Uh, it's very handy because every time we're struggling a lot because some some of them is really brilliant and really smart, maybe from different situation, but their international background they need a visa. But for us, we need to determine, okay, we only have seven quotas. How should we distribute that? Like, who should we get for them? Like, we, we, we need to have the priority. It's, the most, it's hard to say most important, but like, we need to uh, sort in like, different priorities. It's also uh, slow down our speed for expanding our, type, uh, our company in the number of employees. Yeah. So this is still a question for us. Yeah. Do you have a developing, uh, do you have a developing development team back in, in China or somewhere? Or is it like an entire team here? Or is it like some internationally also? Uh, till today, it's the entire team will be here. Wow. Yeah, we don't have a team in China. Yeah. Excellent. So I think, uh, is, it, is that a product demo? Uh, yeah. Can we take a look? Yeah, probably it's easier to. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't talk too much. <laughs> Enterprise, or, or do you have both? You started with the B two B, and and then you. Uh, so which one is picking up more? <laughs> Actually, this is a very good question, and we've been receiving this question um, along the way. Yeah. Like every time we meet a VC, every time we meet the people, they ask, oh, okay, which is your focus? Whether you focus on B two B or whether you focus on B two C, there are definitely different strategies and different methods that will target different audience. But. Um, we also like confused for a long time. We keep thinking, okay, which which way we should focus on? How should we make the decision? But uh, after a while, we kind of more relieved. Like we think, okay, probably we are a special case, 
and uh, since we started, like a lot of company, they have all their own story about why they started the company. Some people, they are experienced uh, in certain industry, they saw there's a problem, they design a solution target for that problem, right? So it's very easy, they know what's a, what's a play rule under the table. But for us, it's more like the first time PhDs and entrepreneurs, we come an idea with, we have a cool technology. We started, don't know, we, we have kind of belief in our mind, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna change the world, it's gonna be exciting. But which focus and what business, what exactly the starting niche problem that we're solving. From the start, we don't really clear. We got the idea more and more clear by discussion with mentors, by like launching our products. We actually think, okay, uh, it's always hard, it's always easier to think in like different market to do analysis to, to think, okay, it's gonna work or not. But the most valuable suggestion, the most valuable decision supporting data came from after we launch uh, our API platform. At least we need to step out the very first step. No matter it's right or wrong, we receive a lot of feedback, people's feedback, okay, they said, okay, I want this function, I want this happening, why, why, why not you're supporting this? Uh, this is working, this is not working. Um, I mean, the first API went out, there's a lot of problems, a lot of questions. But all those feedback, we, we each individual customer and the developer will communicate with them deeply, and uh, now a lot of them are our friends. So they gave a lot of suggestions, they gave uh, how they're gonna use our API, uh, their problems, what are the functions they want. So along the way, it helps a lot. And uh, for us, that in our roadmap, we don't call that B2B. Probably revenue-wise, it's kind of B2B, but for us, we're kind of more uh, dreamer. We, we just want to build the most intelligent engine to recognize all those visual inputs, including images and visuals. And we think the first step to be API because we can get the massive uh, like feedback about the functions. And they are also the massive our beta tester to finding the problems for us. So that's how our engine as a, as a smart engine can move faster than our competitors because we're really open and taking all the suggest that we have data points, we have the real thing that we can work on. And later on, we think, okay, uh, things is good, and along the way, because we communicate with lots, a lot of people, and we also a lot of, we keep receiving this content and we're thinking, and we think, okay, not only for that, we want to get in more feedback, more resources, more suggestions from every individual users, and we think this really help us and we believe it really help with everyone if we can apply the technology to organize their focus. So it's previously that demo. It's not like we start with, okay, I want to do a two customer application. We build a demo because we feel sometimes it's hard to verbally communicate with them, okay, this is work like this, this is a tag we can generate. Okay, just like hard and taking time, sometimes they still don't understand. So we build a demo. And uh, every time we show the demo, I feel, wow, after they see that, they think, oh, now I get what you guys are doing. Now I see what will happen. It helped us open a lot of doors in the early stage. And a lot of people, okay, I like this capability, not only for demo, if you can like run it on my phone. So by receiving that, we made the decision that we want to run it as a mobile application. Yeah. Um, um. The pitching to the VCs is, mm -hmm. is a big part. So what, um, I know that the, the accelerator kind of like trained you for that, but like what lessons, you know, it's, uh, I'm personally also going through a program right now where, mm -hmm. that, you know, pitch is such a, you know, a big part uh, of that, but what lessons have you learned going through the program, uh, the accelerator program, especially pitching to the VCs, you know, how, how to approach that? Um, the lesson I learned from the incubator is more a standard way. It's kind of like a, like the sheet, like one, two, three, four, these are the things you need to cover, those are the things that we sit here. At least in my mind, I'm clear what things to present, what things they want to know, what are the most important ones, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. That is what I learned a lot from the incubation program. But in the everyday life, uh, I talk with different VCs, like the lesson I'm learning is more like actually it's it's 
talk pitchy, but it's still talking. If you are talking, if you are facing a real person, like every VC, every investor I would meet, they have different personalities, they have different backgrounds, they have different experience. Uh, also, they are focusing on different things. Some of them, they just say, oh, I don't care about revenue. I'm more like thinking, like in, willing to invest some kind of those ideas. Some people may think, okay, tell me the three-year projection, five-year projection, what will be the revenue? I think from the everyday uh, pitching, what I learned is it's actually more like the conversation like you're making friends. You need to know that everyone have their different skills that things they care, their uh, successful track record. Yeah. If they invest a certain companies a lot and they earn a lot from those successful cases, they kind of more uh, prefer like think, okay, this should be the right way to do business. There's no right or wrong. It's, it's like fighting friends. It's a matter of match or not. Um, I want to open up for any questions, uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, yeah, you said you've already gotten your round A, you're working in your round B. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't get your round B, mm -hmm. what's that? I assume you're not profitable yet, so. Uh, we have re revenue, but not that profitable right now. But we have our revenue to uh, sustain our life, like running uh, the business at this scale. So at this scale. It's probably be hard to scale up, but uh, mm -hmm. we still can keep running for a while. So this is a good thing. And uh, if we don't get the uh, Series B, I think the first thing is uh, we will, when we approach into that time point, we will be more aggressive driving revenues to have a more flexibility to keep our product running longer. Because we know it's not nothing that we do did good or not good. Sometimes the product, the business, and the impact in the market takes time. I mean, we're not Superman or Superwoman. Like we know a lot of things we need to do. We need a lot of things we need to change for our products. Some, like we take the feedback, but it's sometimes just taking time to do so. So we will try our best to more aggressively to license our technology, drive more revenue to keep our dream like uh, work on, uh, like to keep it longer. This, I think, is when approaching to that point, this is an uh, action I think we're going to do. Yeah. Have you, uh, just uh, on Christo, related to that, have you met projections and milestones so far? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I have two questions, uh, one related to the product and the second related to funding. Mm -hmm. The first one is, uh, do you think that something like this, uh, like going further probably some months or probably some years down the line, would you want uh, to be this to be a feature for Samsung or Apple, or would you want it to be independent and uh, you're probably leading the charge? Mm -hmm. So that is one question, whether keep it independent or whether make it a feature for Samsung or Apple phones. Mm -hmm. The second one is, uh, what do you think exactly should be uh, an immigrant company's, uh, what is the exact amount that they should look for in their seed uh, round, and how much equity should they give up for that? So these are the two questions. Mm -hmm. So for your first question, uh, it's actually, to us, not the question is a good thing because we first started using that demo application. Okay. And by the time we launch it, we do receive a lot of interest uh, both like, from the end users and also other maybe like Cloud Drive and the mobile manufacturer that want to integrate with right. our capabilities. And we're pretty open to that. I think it's bring our additional business opportunities. Yeah. Because for us, the product itself is who we want it to more people using that to make it as a so volume driven like the portal. But we still pretty clear like our we still keep open for other doors because I know like for our company, our dream and our focus, our stress is the engine. The more people using that, the more feedback you they get. The engine is like deep learning, the more like feedback, more data, more things, it's gonna be smarter and smarter, even if like there will be some other application we're supporting, like maybe they use the similar functionalities, but it's actually overall it's beneficial for us. The second question is about like the about the seed funding. Uh -huh. How much uh, amount should uh, a young startup look for in seed funding, and how much equity should we give up for the same? Um, like a general. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's 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 not about like exactly number whether I wanted to talk or not. It's more like depending on every company's situation. Because we first take a, a, a 350K as a very, very first angel round. And 
we slow down for a little bit because we need people to uh, go back to school no matter graduating and to like to go off school we need to wait for the process for a visa to be fully processed so we actually slow down for about three months like slow down in the business that's why we slow down our fundraising process within that three months so that the 350k only keep us to apply for the visas to making sure it can later on legally running so that's how we limited the number of things uh, in the early stage. And later on, after all the visa issue resolved, we are like started again like reconnecting with our previous investor and pitching and we tell them we, we want them to be a uh, real entrepreneur, we want to be responsible for them, we want them to be honest. This is how we solve our legal problem and now we can like full time and dedicated to do this. So they pretty appreciate that. So they actually will follow up another round after the very first round. It depends on the speed. It's more like we haven't. A lot of people require like uh, a lot of the investor require like uh, the full time. Definitely, that's uh, a bottleneck for a lot of things. If you keep saying you're part time, a lot of people won't invest even if they think it's a good idea. And it's definitely it's needed to be legally. So yeah, we slow down a lot, like just to taking care of a lot of, like real problems. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. So you mentioned that you know initial phase you were getting tons of ideas, and especially in that kind of phase which is pretty fuzz fuzzy, how did you decide about your MVP, and what kind of metrics you were tracking in the initial phases after launching your MVP? Yeah, as you mentioned, it's a really fuzzy process. Yeah, we also struggling a lot, but uh, like for us, one thing. We, we are known. There's a lot of the unknown things around us. The one thing they're known is what technology, what functionality we can do good, and what's our specialty is. So it's kind of giving us a, uh, like the idea, like what will be the core thing. Like every, every business idea, or every pivot, is uh, uh, like is surrounded by these core capabilities. Yeah. So that's how we do the first uh, future. And then the second, uh, I talked that we're probably not the typical entrepreneur, we're more like dreamer. We asked ourselves, our small team, so what, what area you're feeling really exciting, you want to devote the, probably the rest of your life, you want to do that. For example, for face recognition and for seeing understanding, especially face recognition, there are lots of things you can do. They're very profitable and everyone knows it's the civilians. There are definitely a lot of people who say technology is civilians, they're huge chunk of money and waiting there if we can do it good. But we discussed that for a long time. It's more like for us, we're a group of young people and we more like want to do some cool technology. It just doesn't sound that sexy. It's not our style. It's not our um, our thing. So we think, okay, we want to do a business. At least I think the minimum thing is everyone of us will feel really excited about this idea. That's how we can devote probably more energy into that. That's why we can like work over hours for this uh, dream. So it's also whether from internally, whether we buy it and whether it's feel exciting, uh, also it's very important thing that we make the decision. Questions? No? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, who's your uh, competitions, if at all? Uh, There's a lot of competition, yeah. definitely. If we choose the right market, there definitely will be a lot of competition. Otherwise, uh, it will be hard. It's either we are very pioneer or we choose the error that everybody already thinks it is not worth doing. <laughs> yeah, so if you have different like startups, there's one currently in New York, there's several like eight different countries. And previously, we got one more, but a lot of them they're either they got acquired. Put up, what's the potential exit? What's your dream potential exit for you? You want to go IPO? You want to go? Um, currently, we don't think that far away. The only thing we want to do currently is two things. Like one, we want to refine our product. We want the people really enjoy it. We want to uh, do user acquisition. We want more people using that. This is our top priority right now. Because nothing seems really sexy if nobody uses it. So this is our first thing. And the second priority is 
our engineer keep up with the trend and uh, to keep learning the most advanced technology, to keep doing refinements, to keep the technology cool. If you want them to lead in the market, it's hard to eliminate competition. The only thing we can do is to be the sound leader and the number one in this market. So, and for the technology, it's easy. It's, everyone can test the performance and things. So this is the thing we're focused on. Sure. So, you know, I think all of us have a uh, huge amount of photographs and videos on our phones, right? So when I met Yi and I saw how easy it was to actually organize that, and how, I was wondering, like, how come never anyone thought of that, you know? It's like tons of uh, digital uh, stuff in there, uh, assets in there. So you guys came up with the idea. So how does it actually work? How do you, like, from, if you're not a facial recognition expert, or how does it actually work? How do you organize that into different... Yeah, so for our organize, so photos mainly fall into two big categories. One is facial recognition, the other is object and scenery recognition. For the face recognition, we do two ways. One is a traditional way, like what you previously saw in iPhone, we can automatically find the similar faces. We group the same faces together. It's like coming with one face group, face group two, and you can name the face group. And after you name the face group, you they kind of associate with the face features with the name. So later I know who you are. This is one way. But on top of that, we also do in additional, in more social ways, we let people log in with their Facebook. The Facebook already have certain technology within the facial recognition. And they already have the people's name and their tag. So we automatically, by your login, we use our already tagged faces together with the tag and the name as our automatic training data. And by the first time, you will see, okay, this is uh, this, this is uh, Paul, this is this. So we automatically already finish that process on the back end by the time you log in. So this gives it an easier, uh, easier way for people to organize that. Otherwise, there's so many faces, people need to like type the name, like go one by one, like there's, for me, like, you can see my phone later on. I have 135 friends on my Facebook. You can see even with the simple face recognition, I need to reproduce, like repeat that process for 100 more times. So this is also additional things we did on that. So where is this data going? Is it going in the cloud now? It processes in the cloud, but we don't uh, store anything. And everything we, uh, we process, we delete that. And there are actually a lot of pre-processing on the phone, so we're not really sending images. It's just like do the pre-processing and the generate image feature and we send the image feature for our cloud to auto tagging. And then the tag sent back to the phone. It's locally stored on the phone. We don't keep any copy of the image online. So you mean to say there's no risk of uh, privacy? No, it's no privacy. And we, we have very detailed thing. Once you download and you will see we have a yeah, very clearly right that we don't store anything. It's every single code is stored on the phone. And we don't want to create another drive. We already got so many drives and it's so That's cheap nice. right now, yeah. Appreciate it. Okay, I might have missed it, but how are you are monetizing your platform? Mm -hmm. What's the monetization? Yeah. So for our app, we kind of have different milestones on how we kind of monetizing that. For the beta, it's totally for free because we're still gathering uh, making changes. The next version is going to be launching in about two weeks. That is, we have an in-app purchase efforts where you can open your additional data sources which you want us to auto-tag in that. For example, like Dropbox, like uh, Flickr, like you know, uh, Amazon Cloud. There's different things. We, we automatically organize and tag in your photo for free for your local album and for your public social uh, profiles. And uh, in long run, there are definitely a lot of things to do because basically what we're doing is the image search. It's a method. It's not a final, uh, final destination that people want to accomplish. Uh, it's just a method for people to more efficiently find their, find their uh, content. So for us, it's going to be a portal. Later on, we can integrate with a lot of third-party apps. It's just that people easily find and retrieve their image here. Later on, they can send it to be massively, maybe adding filters, maybe move it to like some postcard or photo album, it's anything. Just like we provide the very first layer, and they do their business, we provide traffic to them.
if people want to download, they go to, is it available for both Android and iOS? Currently, it's only for iOS. Okay. Uh, you can search Photo Time, and there will be available downloading there. In the Android one, we have a sign-up list uh, both uh, online, and uh, you can directly sign up with me. It will come to launch in about two months. Excellent. I've, I've downloaded and it's really cool, so if you guys want to try it out. Uh, you yeah. mean you can locate someone without their name just by their face? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, and probably you can share the link with us uh, later. Sure, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. Right okay. yeah. yeah, absolutely. And for that, I, I actually can sell e counseling where like the latest version. Yeah, yeah. perfect. And um, what is your role in the company since you're not tech? I'm the CEO, like to achieve the entertainment officer. <laughs> Okay, so so you don't you didn't develop the app, you just there. What did you do? I mean, you, you do the funding, you do everything. Yeah, I do everything except for the real coding. Oh yeah. Like including like a big things like fundraising, like hiring people, like organizing, like doing business strategy decisions. Oh. In a smaller um, uh, item since we. Uh, growing from really small companies, like first I also do like, like I cooking for them, I do oh, you do. housekeeping, <laughs> and, and <laughs> different things from the very early, early stage <laughs> then to it. And, and in our team they call me like kind of mommy, so I do everything except for real cooking. Okay, and what's your background? Um, I, I'm master in information technology, so I'm more like I can understand what they're doing, can communicate with those developers, and uh, I both have like a Interpret, interpret their ideas and their language to a certain type of language that everyone else can understand. I got it. Okay. So what's the size of the team that you have right now? What? What's the size of the team? Uh, currently, we have a team of 15 people. You know, it's. Um, I, I really find this interesting. Um, you talked, uh, you ask a, a tech person, for well, like uh, a phrase or a word, you ask a tech or a developer how, how easy or difficult it is to uh, build a company, uh, you know, it, it's hard for them because, you know, they don't have sometimes the business mindset and uh, uh, the marketing mindset, you know, just the growth mindset and because they have so much focus and ask a business guy or a strategy guy how easy or difficult it is to build a product. And they're like, oh God, I can't do this, you know. So it's it's a perfect marriage. You gotta find the right uh, you gotta find the right partner. It's just like finding a life partner, uh, finding a business partner is similar. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually thinking the same way. Yeah. And also, what I'm doing is I try to solve every other problems for them so that they can more focus on developing the technology. I think it's the same thing that Google does. Google take care of the food, take care of the massage, like the, even laundry, everything. It is not because of cost, it's more like they want their engineer, their team member can focus on the thing. It's not, not like everything. They don't really expect them to like, to dis make every decision. Yeah. Well, so you, so you take care of the catering and all that? Yeah. Oh, you take yeah. care of, to make the team happy? She's a chief entertainment officer. No, no, because uh, where I work, there's the one who is the happiness manager. So that's pretty much what you do. You make everybody happy. Yeah, I make them happy. I solve their problems so they can spend their most energy on developing our technology. Okay, chief happiness officer. <laughs> yeah, some, some but uh, when you that. speak, uh, I mean, it's like a melody when you speak. I hear English, but I hear something else. I hear like a melody, like Ch maybe it's Chinese, but it's like a mix of Chinese and English, and it sounds like a melody. I don't know. What was your first language? Uh, Chinese was my first language. Okay, because there's many Chinese, right? There's Mandarin, Cantonese. Yeah, Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah, okay. Mandarin. Okay. It's very, it's very me. Uh, it's it's like me. No. It's like. <laughs> But then I have to pay attention. What is she saying in English? <laughs> okay. Excellent. Questions, anyone, guys? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. So, if you are given the choice today, YC or the other uh, accelerator, which one would you choose? I 
cannot answer that because I've never been to YC, so it's unfair how I judge that. But you've been in the industry, you've been interacting with a lot of founders. So based on their I think they both good. I mean, according to what I just talked, there's a lot of like common resources to help, especially a first time entrepreneur. Okay. I think those are the experience and the legal help and the reputational help, but both of them have the capability to do so. Okay, uh, I think that's, uh, that's a wrap. So, we really appreciate you coming over here Thank today. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to meet a lot of my friends. Yes. So, uh, guys, uh, so what we do is we open up for a pitch event uh, after the speaking. And